I want us to look through scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 to 23. <laughs> Matthew 1, 18 to 23. This is what the Bible says. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a, a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. To uh, take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Please say Emmanuel which is translated God with us. So underline those two, Emmanuel and God with us. I'd like us also to read the book of 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 12 to 22. Then a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to Shiloh with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. Now when he came, there was Eli seated on a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he said, what does the sound of this tumult mean? And the man came quickly and told Eli, Eli was 98 years old and his eyes were so dim that he could not see. Then the man said to Eli, I am he who came from the battle and I fled today from the battle line and he said, what happened my son? So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines and there has been a great slaughter among the people. Also your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas are dead. And the ark of God has been captured. Then it happened when he made mention of the ark of God that Eli fell off the seat backward by the side of the, of the gate and his neck was broken and he died for the man was old and heavy and he had judged Israel 40 years. Now his daughter-in-law Phinehas' wife was with child due to be delivered. And when she heard the news, that the ark of God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and gave birth for her labor pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women who stood by her, her said to her, do not fear for you have born a son, but she did not answer, nor did she regard it. Then she named the child Ichabod. Tell your neighbor Ichabod saying the glory has departed from Israel because the ark of God had been captured and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said the glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God has been captured. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We pray, Lord, that as we look through your word, may your Holy Spirit minister to us the truths that emanate from the gospel. And so we give you praise. I surrender myself to you, to you, Lord, that you'd use me as your vessel in Jesus' name. Amen. The topic, or you, you'd give it any topic you want, but mine, as I look through scripture, I want to bring us the topic, no longer Ichabod. No longer Ichabod. The Bible tells us a story from the scripture that we've just read in 1 Samuel chapter 4 from verse 12 to 22. It tells us over time when the Israelites went into war with the Philistines. 
And when you read through scripture, it looks like from time to time, they'd always be at war with the Philistines. And this particular time, they were at war. And as they went to war, all the soldiers of Israel, men who had been known to be defeating kingdoms, men who had been known to be subduing kingdom. It was an army that was really, really feared during that time. And so they went out to war and they were thinking it was going to be the same as usual. But the Bible says that when they got into the battlefield, they were beaten thoroughly. And so at the back of their mind, they thought maybe if they can go back to Shiloh, Shiloh at that time used to be the worship center of Israel. Most of the time people, actually all the time, people would uh, come from various parts of Israel to come and worship in Shiloh because that's the place where there was an altar of worship that was raised. So people would come from their various places of residence and they'd come to Shiloh so that they could offer sacrifices. And so the Ark of the Covenant was kept in Shiloh during that time. And so they have been beaten up in the battlefield and they decide because they were together with the sons of the priest, Hophni and Phinehas, they decide that Hophni and Phinehas should go back to the temple, carry the Ark of the Covenant and bring it to the battlefield. And so that's exactly what they did. They went and carried the Ark of God. Remember the Ark of God was a representation of the presence of God to the nation of Israel. And so them carrying it out of the temple so that they can bring it to the battle line, what they had in their mind was like they were carrying the presence of God and going with the presence of God to war. And they knew that if they brought the presence of God to war, then they were going to be victorious in the battlefield. And so they carried the Ark of the Covenant. Now when the Ark of the Covenant arrived in the camp of Israel at the battlefield, there was celebration and there was jubilation. They made so much noise until the Philistines got afraid. And the Philistines started asking themselves, if you can read at your own time in 1 Samuel chapter 4, they started asking themselves the reason of that noise. And what some of them started saying that their God has come into their camp of war. And they started getting afraid because they knew from time immemorial that any time when the Lord would be on the side of the Israelites, then the Israelites would always defeat the battle but when you look back at the book of first Samuel chapter 3 the Bible says that Eli's sons had started misbehaving that's just an overview I'm giving us they had started misbehaving and there were things that they used to do in the temple of the Lord things that displeased the people of Israel things that also displeased the Lord and many times Eli would be told by the people what the sons were doing but he could not correct them properly he chose to have peace with his sons as opposed to having peace with God so at this particular time they are thinking that carrying the presence of God is going to give them victory but God had already departed from a midst or from among them long time ago when they started falling into sin. Praise the name of Jesus. Please tell your neighbor, if you get into sin, the Lord departs. So they have gotten into the battlefield and the war continued and continued. And after a while, so many of them were killed. And so a man escapes from the battle line and he is running back to Israel. And I think this was the common mode of communication because there were no mobile phones at that time. So anybody who would have escaped from a battlefield was always responsible of running back into the nation of Israel and giving people the report of what has happened in the battlefield. So this man comes running into the battlefield and when he arrives he gives the report and 
Eli was sitting by the wayside and he hears the uh, uh, people making noise and crying and before he could even find out what was happening the man had arrived where he was and gave him the report and in the report so many of the Israelites had died including his two sons whom they used to serve with together in the priesthood so the two sons had also died but when he heard that the ark of the covenant had been captured the bible says that he fell from his seat broke his neck and died now all these things are happening and Phinehas' wife is expectant. She is due any time to get the child. And so when she heard that the Ark of the Covenant has been taken, captured, then she hears her husband has died. She hears her father-in-law has also died. She got into labor because of shock. And she got a baby. But even though she got a baby, she could not be comforted. The things were so heavy in her heart and she was ready to die. And so at giving birth, women are there telling her, you have given birth to a son. Because in those days, having a son was a prestigious thing. Just like in most of our African communities. You've gotten a son, but she didn't want anything to do with it. And when she was asked, how do we name, what name do we give your son? And with her last breath, she went like, Ichabod. Ichabod. Why Ichabod? The glory has departed. She said Ichabod because the glory had departed from her family. Remember, she had been married to a priestly family. But now the father-in-law who was a priest, the husband who was a priest, they are both dead. So it was Ichabod in her family. It was Ichabod in her marriage. It was Ichabod to the nation of Israel. And so that is all she could speak out. And then she died. Ichabod. You know, there are times when we go through hard circumstances and when someone comes to ask you anything because of the challenges that you've been going through, all that is coming out of your heart is Ichabod. Does God really remember me? One has a fear. Is God really concerned about my life? I have gone through this marital battle for like forever. I have waited for a very, very long time. Those who are privileged to be here in the first service, we were told about the God who is always on time. But I have waited for this period. God doesn't seem to remember me. For some of us, it even gets to a point where we decide that we are going to help God to help us. Because I've been waiting for this spouse and it doesn't seem to be coming from the house of God. I am going to look for this spouse out there. Then after a short while, I will come back carrying my baby because I will have helped God. Ichabod. We look at the nation of Kenya and the chaos that at times are going on in the nation of Kenya and we can be tempted to say, Ichabod. There's no hope. It is Ichabod. And that was what was in the life of Phinehas' wife. Her name is not mentioned. But she must have been expectantly waiting. Maybe for a period of time, the husband had always gone out on battle and would always come back and report of a victory. And she was expecting that even this time round, because God has constantly been with them, even this time round, they are going to go to battle and he is going to come back, maybe with the goodies that they will have gotten from the people that they would have held captive. But this time... She receives the news. The ark has been captured. The husband is dead. The father-in-law is dead. I don't know where the mother-in-law was. I tried researching for Ellie's wife, Mrs. Ellie. I don't even know what her name was. It is not indicated in scripture. Ichabod. 
A son is born many, many years. And his name is called Ichabod. And I'm thinking many times any place where she'd be, he'd be walking, he would be called Ichabod Kujahaba. <laughs> you know, because when you name your children, that name you keep repeating and repeating, it's like prophetic. The glory has departed. Come over here. That was the name of this boy. And actually, their situation was very desperate in the nation of Israel. But as we read in the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 23, let's go back there. Which I want us to concentrate on today. Even as we look towards the festive season. It talks about the birth of another child, uh, another, another baby boy. In the, in the book of 1 Samuel, it's the birth of a baby boy. But even here, there's a birth of another son. And the Bible says that this birth of this son came at a time when Mary had been engaged to Joseph. Mary had been engaged to Joseph. And when I was looking at the history of Israel, the girls used to be engaged at a very tender age. Between from 15 years, you are ready to get married. So Mary is a teenager who has been engaged to Joseph. Maybe they are just waiting for a few nitty gritties and they will start staying together. And then suddenly an angel comes announcing that you know what? You are favored among all women. One has a few Scriptures that not, does not say you are favored among all girls. Hallelujah. You are favored among all women. Why not girl? 15 year old is a girl. But the angel has already promoted from the heavenlies. Mary has already been promoted from the status of being just like a small girl who is getting excited about soon getting married. God has already promoted her to the level of a woman because when someone calls you a woman, it's a promotion. Something has changed. You're no longer just an ordinary girl. Bonus if you will. So you are favored among all women. And she's wondering, what is this favor all about? What is so different about me? Then she is told, you are going to be the mother of a savior. And definitely she's asking, how now I have never known a man? How now? She knew herself. She knew her walk. She's asking, how now? And the angel tells her, you'll be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. But I want us to concentrate on verse 23. Verse 23. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, meaning what? God with us. The Israelites had lived for a very long time in Ichabod, since the time when the, the, the Ark of the Covenant had been captured. But now, a son is being born who is coming to correct the state of Ichabod. And no wonder I'm saying no longer Ichabod. He is coming to make sure that the glory that had departed is now being restored back to Israel. Born as if you were. Praise the name of Jesus. And this glory is coming still by way of a woman getting a son just like the glory had departed and a woman who was giving birth to a son announced that his son would be called Ichabod. But now the son who is being born, the son whom we are about to celebrate in a few days time, the son who was born of a virgin comes into the scene, but he does not come as Ichabod anymore, but he is coming as Emmanuel. He is coming as God with us. In other words, he is coming to correct the state that was in Israel during that time, the state of godlessness, the state of no glory. With his appearance, the glory was going to be restored in the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. And as his birth, the Bible says that the angels 
announced to the shepherds who were out there watching their flock. The angels who were out in the night watching their flock. The angels come and announce to the shepherds and tell them there is a baby who has been born. And as soon as the announcement has been done, they start singing in the, in the skies and they're saying glory to God in the highest. And immediately the Bible says that the glory of God shone upon the shepherds. Bonus, if you will. I said in a few days time, we are getting into a time of celebrating. How are we going to celebrate the birth of Emmanuel? The other time we were discussing in my family and we were realizing that there are many, many times when people celebrate, decide to celebrate a birthday of someone they do not know. Hallelujah. And I remember I was giving them an analogy and I was asking them, if today you decided to bake a big cake and you place it on this table and you say, happy birthday, Smith. Now I'm Jewish Smith, Ninani. What does he feel? That would look crazy, isn't it? And they start singing, how old are you now? And there is no Smith there. Do you know that is what most of the people in the world are doing? We wish you a Merry Christmas, but yet the person whose birthday you're celebrating, you do not even know. Hallelujah. Today, I want to bring it to us as we are seated in this church, in the balcony, down on the ground and outside, and some of us in the tent, I want to bring it to us that we are not just celebrating the birth of someone we do not know, but we are celebrating the birth of Emmanuel, Christ with us. One as if you will. We are celebrating the birthday of one who is going to bring back glory in our lives. That if your life has been looking like it is dry, it has been looking like things are not adding up. The marriages, things are not adding up. In our family life, things are not adding up. Today, I have come to announce no longer Ichabod. In this season of 2021, yes, we have been frustrated by the pandemic. Yes, we sat and we wondered, where are you, God? If you are there, maybe this pandemic should not have come. Fine, it came, but still it is no longer Ichabod. Hallelujah. It is Emmanuel. Hallelujah. It is Emmanuel. That as I'll be walking into the streets, whether I'll get a chance to go visit my loved ones at home or not, it is Emmanuel. I might have lost one loved one or two because of the pandemic and it looks like things have been so hard on me. But I'm not going to name it Ichabod, I am going to name it Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Fina has wife. Because of what she had gone through, she got to a point of naming her future based on the present. This boy had a long life to live, but the mother decides to name the future based on the present. You are Ichabod because of what I am going through right now. My brother, my sister, irrespective of what you are going through today, never ever define your future based on your presence. Bonus if you will. It could be hard today. It could be that you are not even able to pay that rent today. It could be that you are not able to put a decent meal on the table today, but it can never be Ichabod. It will always be Emmanuel because the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of those things that are not seen. And so I am going to name my future Emmanuel even when it looks like it is all blood. I am going to name it Emmanuel. Hallelujah. My children could be going through a hard time, very, very hard time, or they are giving me a hell of time as a mother or as a father, but I'm not going to stand and say, you will amount to nothing, because when I say you will amount to nothing, what in essence I'm telling them is that they are Ichabod. No, 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 they are not going to be Ichabod. I will say, even though you are in this particular challenge right now, Emmanuel will be in your life. 
Hallelujah. Because unto us a child is born. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son has been given from the heavenlies. It's not a child that they released. It is a son who was given. From our human point of view, it was a child who was born. But from the heavenlies, they released a son. A son who has brought us an inheritance. A son who has brought us the glory of heaven. And therefore, as I announce Emmanuel to my situations today, what I'm saying is, I will not allow my present circumstance to make me think that even the future will be Ichabod. Hallelujah. It might be Ichabod today, but the future is not Ichabod. And what is future? Future is any minute beginning now. Hallelujah. Now when Phinehas' wife announced Ichabod, what she was saying was that the glory had depart departed. She was saying that God had forsaken his dwelling place. What was the dwelling place of God? The dwelling place of God was the temple that was in Shiloh. And now that the ark of the covenant had been taken by the Philistines, had been captured by the Philistines, this woman felt that God had forsaken his dwelling place. Let's look at Psalms chapter 78, verse 60 to 61. So that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent he had placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. By virtue of the Ark of the Covenant having been taken, what had really happened is that God had delivered his own strength that he used to give the Israelites to conquer the nations. He had given it to the enemy, to the captives. And so the Israelites had nothing else that they could depend on. Hallelujah. They had nothing. And in the book of Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 12, when the glory of God departs, hopelessness sets in. But go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. It became a reference point because of wickedness. The Lord here is saying, go to that place and see what I did. To a place I once called home. To a place which was once my residence. Because of the wickedness of the people. Go and see what I did in that place. Oh how I pray that my brother, my sister. Your life will not be used as an example. That God will not come to a point of saying, go and see the life of Pastor Millicent. See what I did to her because of wickedness. But that we will choose to turn to the Lord wholeheartedly and pursue righteousness with everything that we have got. It was saddening my heart that the Israelites got or were plunged into this trouble. Why? Because of a priest who did not do what was expected of him. The entire nation plunged into trouble. And there are things we can do with our lives as men and women that will plunge our entire families into trouble, causing our families to be called Ichabod. How I pray that even as we get into the time of celebrating Christmas in the year 2021, maybe in the previous years it's been with Nyamachoma and Kukuchoma, which is good. In fact, if you'll have Nyamachoma, you can invite me. I'll really be very excited. But apart from that, my prayer will be that you will allow Emmanuel to oversee your life. So that as you walk in the Christmas season and into 2022, you'll be able to say, Emmanuel, not Ichabod. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. 
Mary was going through a hard time. The time when she conceived. She went through a hard time. How was she going to explain to the fiancé that I got pregnant by the Holy Spirit? What does it feel? Hallelujah. Young ladies who are here. And once upon a time, or you are maybe engaged to someone, and then suddenly, this someone starts looking at you. Na no no manza kunona tu. Una nona na shanga, ni kukula na kula mani nini. You know? And then when they come questioning you, at unamambia the Holy Spirit, how now? So she must have been rejected by her peers. She must have been rejected by her relatives who may not have understood. And no wonder the Bible says that Joseph being a just man wanted to divorce her in secret. Akutaka kuifanya openly. So if Joseph himself could not understand until the angel spoke to him, what of the parents? What of the peers? And no wonder the Bible says that she took off to go to the cousin's place, Elizabeth. I keep thinking, scripture is silent on that, but I keep thinking, by the time Anarudi, God atakuwa tu amefanya kitu, na kujua ni nini God atakuwa amefanya. So she was going through a hard time. Maybe not at the magnitude of Phinehas' wife, but she was going through a hard time. But even though she was going through a hard time, she was instructed, you cannot dare call your child Ichabod. This one that you are carrying is going to be Emmanuel. It's going to be Emmanuel. As I conclude, as we celebrate Christmas, this coming Christmas, May the glory of your family be restored through Emmanuel. You keep looking back and you're saying, we used to, we used to, we used to, before the pandemic, we used to. I want to bring an announcement that the Lord of Lords, his name is Emmanuel. As we celebrate him, he is coming in to restore the glory that needs restoration in our families. In spite of the challenges that we could be going through, we are saying it will not be Ichabod, but it will be Emmanuel. The storms are going to be there, but it's going to be Emmanuel. Emmanuel. But for it to be Emmanuel, you must first and foremost surrender your life to him so that it can be Emmanuel, so that he can beautify your life, so that he can take away the shame and the pain and make your life beautiful. So as you'll be celebrating this Christmas, this season, including those who are watching online, let it be Emmanuel in the name of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to bless you and we want to honor you because your glory has been restored in our lives through Emmanuel. You know there are brothers and sisters whose lives have been difficult. Some have been going through various storms, O oh God. And they are even being tempted to name their future based on the present, O oh God. Father, we decree and declare Emmanuel in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who had pronounced Ichabod, we want to reverse, oh God, now in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who had pronounced Ichabod in their children, Ichabod in their families, Ichabod in their lives, oh God. We announce Emmanuel in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. That this Christmas season is going to be different, oh God. Even as you transform our lives, oh God, and as we experience Jesus Christ in a new dimension. And so, Lord, we want to announce Emmanuel in our lives, in every aspect of our lives, because we pray in Jesus' name. You could be there, but you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. With all heads bowed down, you want to receive Jesus so that it will be Emmanuel for you. You can just lift your hand. 
and we'll pray together. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for everyone in here and everyone who has watched, oh God, online. We thank you because indeed it is Emmanuel, God, with us in this season and in the seasons to come. In Jesus' name we pray.